Zero trust is really just a cybersecurity strategy that assumes three things. Uh, one, that the perimeter is gone um, and that the notion of trust is to defend what's inside. It's kind of gone and, and it's dead. We've really seen this um, become more prevalent with the pandemic and, you know, more people having to work from home, people are, are all over and that kind of sense of a perimeter is, is really dissipated really quickly. Uh, secondly, it, it kind of comes along with doing a default deny or a trust but verify um, where you need to be validated by during each authentication to kind of prove you are who you say you are. Uh, and lastly, that kind of digital transformation drives the need, you know, as apps and services explode and security teams need to automate, um, they're really looking towards zero trust type technologies uh, that are really going to help keep their assets and their infrastructure safe by going through that trust but verify process uh, that is zero trust. H really comes in for zero trust is, you know, it's, it's being used to uh, create encrypted sessions or encrypted tunnels into environments and you really can't have uh, a true zero trust strategy or approach without factoring uh, in SSH into that thought process there. You know, with that perimeter being gone, it's it's vital to have an accurate inventory of the SSH keys so you can determine, you know, where those keys are. Are they trusted keys? Do they meet our policy? And, you know, should we allow them to be used in our environment? Uh, one of the things we're really seeing customers do is, is take this a step further and they're beginning to leverage SSH certificates and they're giving them a stronger zero touch approach uh, due to their ephemeral nature. So for example, when individuals need SSH access, uh, when they're using SSH certificates, uh, they can be configured in such a way that they need to be requested um, to gain access each time and that they're only valid for, let's say, five minutes. So you have five minutes to kick on that SSH uh, session and then that you'd have to request access again. This is really giving enterprises uh, better visibility and control uh, over their critical systems that are leveraging SSH. So some things to consider when ensuring that your SSH machine identities are really kind of up to par for zero trust uh, requirements would be, you know, as far as keys go, um, enterprises need to continuously monitor and they need to have that accurate inventory of their keys in their system. Um, this is going to make sure that you're meeting the business policies that are set out and it's going to be able to make sure that you have some solid crypto agility around if ever there were things to go wrong, you're able to react quickly. Now, if companies are making that leap and they're going into taking uh, SSH certificates into the fold and starting to implement that into their uh, zero trust strategy, what they want to do is they want to ensure that they have individual templates set up for different business units, uh, kind of locking down access as to what uh, groups and business owners are able to access specific servers and implementing um, different validity periods and restrictions on that SSH usage. Uh, this is a really going to allow them to lock down and you know follow that that true uh, zero trust strategy of trust but verify.